And so let's go uh, to teams now. We'll leave the divisions behind. Which team is most likely to go from worst to first in their division, David? Okay, I kind of hinted at this earlier, but I believe it's the Jets. Now, they won seven games last year with a really good defense, a great young coach, and some really good pieces. They only added more pieces to the offensive system. We talked about their Brees, Brees Hall at running back, and, and the run game is going to be there. Now, if this guy can get anything going, Aaron Rodgers, with the passing game, he's going to play good conservative football. That's the thing about Aaron. When he knows he has a good defense and he has a solid run game, he will not turn the football over. So that's exactly what Robert Sala wanted. Like, there was even comments Robert made about the quarterback position last year. We only need you to play quarterback for like five or six plays in a game. Now, Aaron Rodgers can play quarterback for 50 plays in a game. So I think that if any team can go from worst to first in this competitive division, it's going to be the Jets. Yeah, I mean, I really like that. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a difference maker. And there's another quarterback out there who was supposed to be a difference maker, had his off-field issues who this year, I think, is going to get it done. That's Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. And it kind of pains me because I'm so bullish on the Cincinnati Bengals. But I just talked about how this division is up for grabs for just about any team in the AFC North. And if Deshaun Watson gets back, I mean, him, Amari Cooper, Nick Chubb, some of the pieces on that offensive line, they bring in Jim Schwartz to be their defensive coordinator. This is a team that could surprise Again, I think it could be a, a, a reach to say they're going to beat the Bengals in the division. But then again, I think this is going to be such a tough division. The Cleveland Browns have a chance to go from worst to first. All right, so speaking of surprises, let's go total surprise. Because, David, what about a team? Do you think there's going to be a team that won the division last year that's going to finish dead last? Who goes from first to worst? They started looking at these division winners, and you got the Chiefs, the Bengals, the Eagles, the Niners. Like, what team is going to go and finish in last place out of these teams, right? There might be some out there, maybe the Jags, you can say. Maybe there's a couple other ones. But I'm going to say nobody. I'm going to say none of these teams. Like, these teams are good football teams. They're at the top of their division for a reason. I don't see anyone taking a significant hit and dropping all the way down into the cellar of their division. It's not going to happen. Wow, the Jags. The Jags are on the come up. I think they're going to be even better this year. Right. But yeah, I'm going to exactly. hey, I'm going to stay in the state though because I think Tampa Bay is one of those teams that could one. go from first to worst just because that division, the, the NFC South, was so bad last year, yeah. and all the teams were clustered. It's really not a reach to maybe lose three more games he did last year to, to fall back to last place. They couldn't score, and they don't have Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. Now, they've made some changes. Dave Canales is a new offensive coordinator here. A lot of good things about him. But with teams like the Falcons on the come up, the Saints are the team to beat in the division going into the year. And we don't know what we're going to get out of Carolina. This is a possibility where the Buccaneers could fall to last place, but it may not be like a catastrophic you know, plummet. Yeah, the center of the year. a lot can happen in the South. Correct. And the Bucks are a common team to come up when we're having this uh, conversation right now. But Friday on GMFB, Bucks running back Rashad White says, don't forget this, this team was more than just Tom Brady in 2022. We got Pro Bowl, Pro Bowlers, all pros. I mean, you know them. I can name them. Mike, Chris, uh, Levante, uh, Vita. Um, I mean, I could keep going. Tristan, uh, just guys like that, good vets, um, even that didn't haven't made the Pro Bowl or things like that, like uh, Jamel, Cardin, um, that's top whatever in a position. So, I mean, I think we're good. Like you said, it's wide open. Uh, we got a great shot. We got a new, uh, you know, new regime here, uh, new confidence, new swagger, new energy, and uh, we just ready to go out there and uh, play for one another, play together, and have fun. And <laughs> word on the street is that you're one of the biggest trash talkers out there on the field. Uh, if you are not the biggest trash talker, who is? And give us a little flavor. Give us a little sample of what you're dishing out on the field. Uh, I mean, you want a little sample, a little, little flavor? Uh, I don't know. It, it got to yeah. be in the moment for me, honestly. So right now we ain't competing <laughs> or, you know, we ain't going against each other. All right, you're not going to run the ball against us, man. You, you think you're going to bring that ball in here? You're going to come in and save that? <laughs> you're not throwing that rock against us. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I think you kind of delusional if you think that uh, we're not going to run that ball against you <laughs> or whoever else. <laughs> we, got, we got a literal spit take on the set just now. Look at this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did, it come, did it come on the nose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, a lot of fun on GMFB. Speaking of GMFB, Sarah Walsh, happy to welcome her in fresh off of a week uh, co-hosting the show. Rashad told you he's confident both personally and as a team going into 2023, but we know the Bucks are going to look different post-Tom Brady, so what's going to be the biggest difference for Tampa other than not having 12 there? 
Yeah, Patrick, they're going to look vastly different, and it's not just because a Hall of Famer walked out of the building. I heard Steve just talk about it a couple of minutes ago. It's Dave Canales. They have this new offensive coordinator, and he's never been in that role before in his career. He has harped to us every time we have heard from him that you're going to see a balanced Buccaneers team. And it has been all pass all the time in the previous three seasons with Tom Brady. This is a Bucs team that struggled to run the football and at points didn't even try to run the football. If you go back to when Brady arrived and you look at where they ranked in rushing the football, I mean, the numbers are not great. And then just last year alone, they were last in rushing yards, last in attempts. I told you at certain points, they were like, we're not even going to bother with that. However, that is going to change, says Canales. And Rashad White is a really big reason why people think that it should change. I mean, he was backing up Leonard Fournette for the bulk of the season, and yet he almost ran for 500 yards. He had 50 receptions. That led all rookie running backs. And I think this is an interesting note. The last rookie running back that had at least 400 rushing yards and 50 receptions was a guy by the name of Christian McCaffrey. So there's a lot of folks that think Rashad can really break out. And he told us during mini camp that it's allowing things to happen for other guys. The fact that they are more balanced. He said Mike Evans came off the field and said it's been a minute since I've been this open. So that's what Rashad going off can do for the other big stars on the Buccaneers. And then you were talking about this division. The Bucs won it the last two years. You know, the hype is with the Saints right now because Derek Carr went there. The attention is with the Panthers because they had the number one overall.